agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Morton. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I too rise to speak on the Copyright Amendment Online Infringement Bill 2015. Uh, big shoes to follow after that great speech from the member for Greenway. Uh, the purpose of this bill is to address the ever-increasing problem of online piracy in Australia. Uh, as mentioned by the member for Greenway, sadly, by international standards, Australia's level of online piracy is very high. Uh, in fact, according to the Choice Survey, about one in three Australians, if I think of one in three people in my electorate, I've got my wife, myself, and let's say any, any other person in, in, the, in the chamber from, from Morton, one of us, one of us three will, will have um, access data, and I know it's not my wife and I. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but obviously, with one in three Australians doing that, uh, according to the Choice Survey, I don't know whether that's our larrikin spirit or our convict links, or the, uh, as the member for Greenway touched on, the fact that Australians have been shafted for such a long time when it comes to price and the timing of uh, 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 the, the shows that they want to watch. Uh, nevertheless, uh, ir irrespective of those reasons, uh, this piracy is a real threat to our creative industries. Uh, it's important that we look after the artistic endeavours of our authors, of our directors, of our musicians, and make sure that they receive a fair return for their, art uh, for their artistic endeavours. I know this has been canvassed before by the uh, member for Chifley in a, in a previous inquiry uh, and raised those concerns about, about price and timing. I'm not going to canvass that in this uh, speech. Uh, instead, I'm just going to address the, the copyright legislation that's before the chamber. Uh, but I will, I will say, however, a, as a, um, someone that, that struggles to, um, with creative endeavours as an author, I think it's important that we do look after these industries because this, these industries are still reeling, uh, particularly in, in terms of artistic endeavours, by the recent decision, bizarre decision by the Attorney General on budget night to strip $105 million from the independent, well respected, historically uh, creative and lean Australia Council and move it into his office. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, something I'll address in, in, in other forums. But I, I do want to focus particularly on the, on the protecting artistic endeavours uh, via this copyright amendment. Obviously, piracy damages a, a vulnerable industry and impacts on precious Australian jobs. And that, that creative process I've been involved with in, outside of being a politician, both as a musician and, and as an author, uh, a, a very, very ordinary uh, musician and a very... And a, uh, an author with uh, limited, <laughs> limited financial success. Kind of a uh, and, and nevertheless, uh, I, I do. Um, back, back in my in, in my uh, teachers' college days, I was in a, in a band that people can track down, uh, and one of the had a fantastic songwriter, a guy called John Carrozza, who's now gone, actually gone on to be be an artist. In fact, he's got a showing uh, this Friday, commencing uh, commencing this Friday at Gallery 61, Musk Avenue, Kelvin Grove. Uh, that I hope to get along to, uh, but uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you, member for Melbourne Ports. Uh, I, I know you, you, you'd get along if because of you, 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 because of your support for artistic endeavours. Uh, but there's a guy, a, a great artist, uh, as a musician now, now as a, a painter, uh, finding it hard to, to extract a, a, an income from his artistic endeavours. And I know, as an author, how difficult that is as well. So I understand the difficulties of emerging artists in particular in terms of trying to develop a, uh, a, a sustainable income. It, these, these are very difficult industries, whether it be cinema or writing or musicians or whatever, to get a foothold in. And in this modern world of illegal downloading, it is even harder to make a buck. And it would be a sad day when the only way for an up-and-coming rock star, you know, the, the U2s or the Midnight Oils or the like, the only way they could make a dollar would be actually busking and performing live rather than being able to sell their, their product uh, to the world, not just to Australia, but to the world, something that Australian musicians, Australian cinematographers, Australian um, theatre producers have done so well. So this bill will not solve this difficult problem, but it will be a small, common-sense measure that will disrupt the foreign websites which are acting as havens for piracy and may discourage some of those Australian consumers, those one in three Australian consumers, from participating in this practice. A, a, a practice that sabotages the artistic endeavours of the very artists we admire and support. Obviously, we don't download the material from artists that we don't admire and respect and support. So 
it is that conundrum, and as the member for Greenway uh, touched on, if people had the opportunity, they'd be prepared to pay something that is reasonable. But we come down to those problems of, of price and those problems of timing. So I, I stress up front for those people that are interested, and I'm talking particularly to one of my constituents, uh, Nerdy Nigel, uh, that's his Twitter name, this bill does not provide an internet filter of any kind. Uh, what it does provide, and this is important in this week where we're celebrating the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta, it provides a judicial remedy. A judge will decide whether the conduct involved breaches our Australian law and each case will be decided on its merits, something that all Australians would be supportive of, obviously. This bill will provide for the owner of a copyright to apply for an injunction to require a carriage service provider to take reasonable steps to disable access to an online location. <clears throat> and now, an injunction, as any lawyer would know, is a serious remedy to seek. So the bill provides that before a court can grant an injunction, the court must be satisfied that the primary purpose of the website is to infringe copyright or to facilitate the infringement of copyright. I repeat again, so that the carriage service provider, the CSP, uh, the, the will be only impacted on if the court is satisfied the primary purpose is to infringe copyright or to facilitate the infringement of copyright. The primary purpose test is uh, built into the bill is a high threshold for the applicant to meet. And that is a necessary protection to CSPs so that they are not targeted if their main purpose is actually a legitimate purpose. And some examples of legitimate purposes may be an art gallery website which is operated from another country or, or even the iTunes store, some, uh, which is a site where I seem to be investing most of my disposable income. I've moved on from cassettes. That wasn't so good. <laughs> CDs, also not a wise decision. Uh, now, now investing in, in iTunes. I'm hoping Thanks, that will... <laughs> okay, I, I never moved into records, member for, member for uh, Melbourne Ports. Uh, if I did, perhaps that would be a wise financial decision, but I, I wouldn't change it. Uh, at all. I, I, music is such an important part of my life. So, uh, so in both of these examples, the CSP is legitimately providing content for the purpose of selling that content and benefiting the holder of the copyright. There may, however, be occasions where the photograph on the art gallery website is not properly authorised or iTunes is not licensed to distribute a particular item in Australia, something which I occasionally come across in, when tracking down some of the more obscure bands that I, I um, like to listen to. So no one would seriously contend that in those particular cases websites like iTunes uh, should be disabled. However, this legislation is designed to, to disrupt those websites that are flagrantly acting as conduits to pirated copyright material. It is important that when such a serious consequence such as disabling access to a website is at stake, there should be safeguards in place. And the bill provides that before a court can grant an injunction, it must consider 11 mandatory factors contained in the legislation. One, the flagrancy of the infringement of the copyright. Two, whether the website makes available directories, indexes or categories of the means to infringe copyright. Three, whether the owner of the website demonstrates disregard for copyright generally. Four, whether the access to the website has been disabled by orders from any court of another country. Five, whether disabling the access is a proportionate response to the infringement of copyright. Six, the impact on any person or class of persons likely to be affected by the grant of the injunction. Seven, whether it is in the public interest to disable access to the online location, an important consideration. Number eight, whether the owner of the copyright had notified the operator of the online location as required under the legislation. Nine, whether any other remedies are available under the Copyright Act. 10, any other matter prescribed by regulations and 11, any other relevant matter. It is a non-exhaustive list, so the court can consider any other relevant matter. This judicial discretion is another safeguard and an important one when the remedy sought is as serious as an injunction. There have been concerns around this bill, in particular that its provisions would extend to blocking virtual private networks, VPNs, not VPLs, VPNs. The Senate Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee have investigated whether that would be the case, and our Labor senators on that committee are satisfied that the provisions of the bill do not extend to the blocking of VPN usage. To eliminate any doubt whatsoever about the blocking of VPNs, 
Labor has asked that the government amend the explanatory memorandum to clarify this, and I'm sure we'll, we'll hear from the minister directly about this. I hope that the government will, will attend to that. We are living in a digital era. As, as an uh, occasional author, I appreciate how different the publishing world is today from even 10 years ago. Uh, I remember a uh, Labor Party conference not that long ago <laughs> arguing with the Hon. Craig Emerson about the parallel importing of books. And, uh, the arguments that I had then, which I genuinely, be genuinely believed, I see now how much Kindles and iPads have taken over the, the, the reading experience for people. Uh, now they're, they're completely commonplace on a plane, and you, in, it's almost rare to see someone holding a, a paper printed book. Uh, and I see uh, we, we do need to have these arguments, particularly when it comes to uh, Australian, when it comes to supporting Australian endeavours. We are a small country. A, uh, a long way away from Europe and the United States, uh, uh, well, from anywhere, some might argue. So it's important to, to support that Australian story wherever we can. And I, I was particularly concerned today uh, to, to revisit some of these arguments when the uh, entertainment industry visited me to talk about the proposed review, uh, supposedly a red tape review in terms of um, a, a government deregulation agenda. But it's, it's going to have a particular challenge for the Australian entertainment industry. Uh, Australia's long-standing support for homegrown entertainment and entertainers is actually could be under threat by the Attorney General's uh, review, quietly announced, I think, on the 6th of January. Not even a press release came out about this review. Uh, the, the government is proposing to cut the requirements for tax-funded, taxpayer-funded productions to employ Australian actors and crew. This would completely undermine decades of work that has built up a viable local entertainment industry. Uh, I should explain that the current guiding principle for the, for the current arrangements is simple. Productions that are funded by Australian taxpayers should create opportunities for Australian actors and crews to work, gain experience and get the breaks they need to succeed here and on the world stage. That's how we're able to produce those great actors. So that's a, a, a matter that the Attorney General is advancing that we'll discuss later down the track. But it's important if we're going to have an Australian, a legitimate, strong, true Australian story, that we make considered deci decisions that are in the national interests rather than just letting the market rip. That is not the Australian way at all. As I said, uh, uh, we, we had a similar argument when it came to, to publishing a, uh, a few years back. So, being aware of these changes, Labor, when in government, asked the Australian Law Reform Commission to launch an inquiry into copyright law uh, in the digital economy. The resulting report was provided to the current government in November 2013. The government have been sitting on that report now for 18 months. They have not responded to the report, let alone taken any steps to implement any of this, the recommendations by the Australian Law Reform Commission. Australia has a vibrant community of artists and creators. You see them everywhere. In fact, I saw them. I met with a group of them last Friday in my electorate at Morton at Sherwood. Uh, they're called a half dozen group of artists, a group of painters and, and uh, people that sketch that have been around for 75 years. Um, and they are everywhere. They what they are what hold this Australian entity together by telling those Australian stories. Whether it be a story when you're fresh off the boat. Uh, two, two years ago, or your family, family roots go back to um, you know, uh, Governor Bly and, and, and beyond. You know, whatever the story is, you tell that Australian story. Um, but, this sect <laughs> this <laughs> but this sector needs support. They do not, they do not need the, the artistic sector does not need the uncertainty of funding cuts and an attorney general who wants arbitrary control of the funding that is left. They do not need the uncertainty of outdated regulations around the new digital era in which they are contributing. This bill is a small measure to help reduce the current levels of online piracy in Australia, and I support the government's endeavours. I thank the honourable member for Morton. The question now is that the amendment be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for.